We've all heard the pyramids of Giza, Machu Picchu, and Easter Island. But what about the awesome ancient places you haven't heard of? Hmm. I'm Adam Andrews. And I'm Big Chet. Join us, Bumblebees, on an ancient journey through 10 ancient sites you never knew existed. Ooh. <laughs> Number 10. Mesa Verde. When I think of places I'd like to pop my city, I can honestly say I don't first think of under a cliff. But think about it. Natural protection from the elements, assuming the cliff doesn't erode away over time like everything does, dropping huge chunks of rock on you from above. At Mesa Verde National Park in Colorado, you'll find the remains of cliff dwellings and the cliff palace of the Pueblo people who inhabited the area around 900 years ago. The Pueblo people lived for a long time, on top of the top of the mesas for over 600 years, and then began to move to and build anything from storage rooms to whole villages underneath the cliffs, probably for protection from the climate change and harsh weather, but I'm assuming it was to just get some well-needed shade. Number 9. Samarkand All roads lead to Rome. Well, then all Silk Roads lead to Samarkand. Or at least it was a famous pit stop along the way. No one is quite sure when Samarkand was founded. Some evidence suggests that there have been humans living in the area from at least 40,000 years ago. Long time. But one thing is for sure, both its history and finances were quite wealthy. Silk, Jade, and all the goods that the Silk Road offered made their way to and through Samarkand. This made the city very wealthy. It exchanged empires the same way I exchanged bad gifts from your aunt at Christmas. Persian, Greek, Mongol, and most recently Soviet in what is now called Uzbekistan. Today you can still find ancient buildings and mosques from a time long past, as that was the main religion. However, the city was also a place of culture and art, which meant for a long time there was some coexistence going on. But it's really nice amongst the different faiths. Very nice, I like. Number 8. Orkney Islands. You've heard of Stonehenge, but that's been overdone countless times before. You want something new, a different location with the added benefit of having other sites for the kids to go to and check out nearby. Look no further than the stunning Orkney Islands, home to the stones of Stennis, Meishau, the Ring of Bodgar, and Scarabray otherwise known as the heart of Neolithic Orkney. Stenez is our main standing stone henge-like attraction. Meishau is a lovely underground burial mound sporting some striking 12th century Viking graffiti. Scarabray is an in-ground stone-built Neolithic settlement. And last but not least, the Ring of Brodgar is an even bigger circle of stones. You'll be well removed here at Orkney, situated as an archipelago right at the tippy top of Scotland with stunning views, angry Scottish neighbours, and the Nordic founded town of Kirkwall. Just bring a jacket, maybe. Number 7, Nan Madal. This is one I had never heard of before. Very interesting, too, especially one that has been described as the Venice of the Pacific. Sometimes I'm described as that. Not really. Some even think it has connections to Atlantis. Ooh, maybe. That I'm not sure of. However, if you took a pleasure cruise with your spouse down to the Pacific, and why not? Most people can't say that they've done that, so go do it. You would find an ancient stone ruins built upon some land, and more interestingly, built upon a coral reef. A series of small artificial islands connected by canals. Ones belonging to the Saudler dynasty, I'm pretty sure I said that right. Which, yes, that's new to me too. Today, Nan Madal is a protected heritage site. So you know what, Bumblebees? Don't go there and take anything that you weren't supposed to. Go look, but don't touch. I'm watching. I'm watching. Always watching. Number six, the city of Karl Supe. The ancient city of Karl Supe is the oldest civilization center in the whole of the Americas, being over 5,000 years old. You'll find this lovely World Heritage Site in the desert of Peru's Supe Valley, north of the Lima River. Being first built in 26,000 BC, before the Great Pyramids were even built, the site itself has temples, an amphitheater, plazas, and ordinary houses. The society that actually built and lived here were apparently a gentle society, built on commerce and pleasure. Which is backed up by the fact that we haven't really found any defenses, mangled bodies, or tools of war. We did find tools of music though, specifically 32 flutes and 37 cornets. So the Andean people who inhabited this place didn't fight and they knew how to have a hoedown. Let's bring back this way of life, yeah? Maybe? Number 5. Hattusa. Rejoice my late 90s PC gamers for I bring another point in your honor, the city of Hattusa of the Hittite Empire. Before this list, my only knowledge of the Hittites came from Age of Empires. I swear man, every time I start up a random scenario and just looking for a little 1998 nostalgia, the Hittites come up and attack me before I can get my walls up. It's the worst. 
Well, this makes a lot of sense actually because the Hittite Empire was one of the first civilizations to reach the Iron Age in real life. Hattusa was the capital of said empire. Today, the very beautiful ancient ruins can be found near Turkey. So the question is, how did such a strong empire fall? The answer was the Assyrians. Over time, the Assyrians conquered more and more until Hattusa kind of just was depopulated. There's been some interesting finds at the sites as well, such as two sphinxes that the international community got into an argument over whose museum they should sit in. What's the lesson in this one? Well, nothing lasts forever, and maybe wait till they build my walls to attack me. Just wait, dude. Just wait. Number four, Volubilis. Whoa, what's this? Another World Heritage Site? During the first century of both BC and AD, the city of Volubilis in modern day Morocco was a cultural mixing pot. First settled by the Berbers and eventually became the chief inland city of the Roman Empire province that was located here, which I will totally mess up the pronunciation of, so I'm not going to say it at all. People of both the Islamic and Christian religions would come here trading, living, and creating beautiful mosaics for over 10 centuries, and it became the capital of Idris I, founder of the Idris dynasty. The parts of the city that we have discovered so far include an aqueduct, thermal baths, and a triumphal arc. And they're all in pretty primo condition given all the crazy weather, earthquakes, and multiple different inhabitants over the year. It honestly seems like a place a lot of people should have heard of. Maybe I'm just the only one who hasn't, I don't know. Number three, Antioch. Boy, lots of learning today. And judging from the comments, you guys like learning from us, so thanks guys, that means a lot. Thank you so much. Besides a Monty Python skit about a hand grenade, I hadn't heard about Anatoc. I, who would have thought? I know. Sometimes referred to as the cradle of Christianity, it played a major role in Christianity and its longevity. Founded by one of Alexander the Great's generals, the city was in a prime location and benefited from all sorts of trade routes like the Silk Road for example. Surprisingly, the city grew so much it even began to rival Alexandria, with an estimated population of 250,000 at its peak. Whew, that's a lot of people. It was a happening place. Sadly, it pulled to Detroit and went from a very profitable city to, uh, well, a not so popular one, as natural disasters like earthquakes and a declining trade made the city a not so happening place. All I know is that you pull the pin and count to three, not two. Three, and certainly not five. I do know that. Number two, Darren Kuyu Underground City. Hey, uh, honey, I, uh, found a hidden room behind the basement wall, and, uh, you're not gonna believe this, but it leads to an 18 story deep 7th or 8th century underground city used by around 20,000 people as a defense against invaders with ventilation shafts, waterways, stables, churches, and storage. So I, uh, I think the value of our house just went up. Yes, back in 1963, a local man in Cappadocia, Turkey, who was renovating his house, stumbled upon an entrance to this massive underground labyrinth of chambers, shafts, and corridors that goes over 85 meters deep into the ground. It had huge stone doors and everything from schools to wine rooms for people to use as a defense against invasion and religious persecution. We don't actually know which civilization built this city, but it once connected to many other underground cities that have been discovered in the area with miles long tunnels. It's honestly the coolest thing I've ever heard of, and I may need to plan a trip. Speaking of, have any of these sites maybe made the travel list for any of you guys? Let me know down below. Mm. Number one, Leventa. Mesoamerica, cool place, lots of treasure, and home of Leventa. These ruins are located in the spicy Mexican state of Tabasco. Constructed by the Olmecs, one of the oldest civilizations in the Americas, Leventa was a civic and ceremonial center. As a ceremonial center, there are tombs, mounds, and ceremonial offerings. Strangely enough, there's a pyramid as well, and some statues that have big head mode cheat enabled. They're big heads. It seems Leventa is a strange mishmash of little sites and artifacts, also including mosaics, altars, and some strange rock formations. All these lovely artifacts were not discovered fully until the 1950s, so it makes you wonder what else we've lost the time in that thick jungle. Wouldn't it be nice to travel together, Andrew? I agree, young Adam. Imagine if we had our own travel show. Maybe one day, sir. Maybe yes. one day. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe here at Bumblebee. And if you too want to see a travel show with us in it, then check out our socials down below. Somewhere down there. I love you guys so much. I've been one of your hosts, Big Chetty. I've been your other host, Adam Andrews. And um, see you soon. have a great one. Number four, Volubilis. God, that sounds wrong. Didn't file your paperwork last night. Didn't file your paperwork. The roaches. The roaches. 
So the Andean people who inhabited this place didn't fight, and they knew how to have a. Number three, Anatosh. 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 How do you say? Anatosh. The hell, hand grenade. Antioch. Antioch. That's Antioch. Antioch. 